That's how close it is. And that's the part that we've got to cross over and make sure we take care of business. I saw Carol Dawson here. I, 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 I'd be remiss not to mention him as a greater Baker of alumnus and coach. Uh, I was surprised he didn't stand when they mentioned the, the Hall of the Baker Hall of Fame. Is he not in that job? I, I know, but you're in it, aren't you, Carol? <laughs> well, I didn't see you stand up, so I was thinking if you're not in it, we'll take the vote right now and make sure you <laughs> Most part, but they're used to carrying the, the, the weight of the town on their shoulders. Right? 
you're the starting quarterback at Coppers Pelt High School at Stephenville at Abilene Wiley or any small town in America, Pittsburgh, Texas, where Kendall Wright was a quarterback, you know, D Cab or Terrence Ganaway was a quarterback, then you see people having they're looking at you. They're saying, there goes our quarterback. You know, what's this guy like? You know, the, you have to have some type of high character about you if you're representing that whole that whole community. So that, that makes a big difference. I like those guys that are used to having people look at them and depend on to do the rest of the time. Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Yes, sir. Okay, ask about uh, help from incoming freshmen and transfers. You no, know, think about transfers is they had to sit out. We had a guy sit out last year named Sean Oper, who is from Penn State, who actually is up to 274. We just saw him on the scales yesterday. He's about 6'7", 274. He, he's a tremendous defensive end. I think we'll get a, a lot of immediate help out of him. He's a really, really good football player. As far as the incoming freshmen, you know, two guys come to mind, Robbie Rhodes and Andrew Billings. I mean, Andrew Billings, because uh, both, both those guys are good. I knew Andrew was good. I mean, I, I knew he was a good football player. I didn't know he was agile. You know, I didn't know he was that competitive. I didn't know he was that tough. Man. So he's a guy that's got to get a chance to get on the field. Robbie, you know, Robbie, as we said, going into the season, you know, he's the number one receiver in America last year. I don't, I don't think there's any doubt about that. And, and we'll just see how that, you know, transfers over from high school to the Legion's League because, you know, everything happens really fast. It'll have to be a situation where we'll have to you know, bring him around and get him ready to go as we've had to do some other transfers and freshmen. But uh, those two guys, I would say, to be the first come to mind. Y'all can thank anybody over there. But they're different. They're different. Any other transfer besides uh, Oki? Any other transfer besides Oki? I might be there now. I think he's the only guy that's, that's in the pitch right now. We already have a couple of transfers. Some that have said this year. Yes, sir. Coach, have they made any progress on having a double signing day for recruiting? Talk about that. Yeah, you know, they, he's asked about the double signing day. There's been a, two or three things proposed. There's been one like in July, July 15th, then one December 15th, and then of course the February signing day. I've always voted for the December 15th and the February signing day uh, just for the simple fact that, you know, you don't want to use the word chase, but we recruit these kids year round. I mean, we're already on 2015 kids, believe it or not. You know, we've got, I don't know, 19 or 20 uh, commits for the 2014 class. So you spend a lot of time with these guys and, and, and a lot of effort, a lot of, a lot of money, you know, really for the university. And to me, it would save a whole lot of money, a whole lot of time, a whole lot of effort and anguish if you, you know, could sign these guys December 15. You know, get that over with, then you might sign 14, then, then you. Up a little more for the February side day. But, you know, they, they haven't done that for a variety of reasons. You know, coaching changes and sometimes kids change their mind, you know, late. Yes, sir. What was it that y'all did to the defense about halfway through the season? <laughs> 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 the season this year, they waiting for like you. know, that's, that's something they exactly asked about the defense. And, you know, the thing about the Big 12, it is, it's a tough thing to play defense. Tough, tough lead. Uh, you, know, you, take, you take some of the offenses and you put them in the SEC, you put them in the Pac-12, you put them in the Big Ten, and, and they're going to be effective. And I think there's some proven facts to that. I mean, 2007, when I'm at the University of we go to Alabama, they beat us 26-21 on homecoming up there, and we're throwing in the end zone for the seven yard line. With Case Keenum, Miss Keenum's here today, you know, as a red shirt freshman. And, you know, their linebackers still got some of our DNA, our running backs DNA on the fingernails because they're they're written down to play and not letting get out because we had a man up on them. So and then you look at what AM did this year in the SEC. So there's some really, really good offenses in the Big Twelve. I think what happened late is, is that, you know, with Coach Bennett they do a great job of the defense staff. We've got two of our coaches on defense here today. You know, just it takes time sometimes. You know, it, you just don't things don't happen overnight. I mean they're going into the third year this year. Everybody uh, understands how they're going to be coached, what they're expected, how, how to expect to perform on the field, how to perform the practice, and that's a big deal. So I think as they grow together on that side of the ball, we'll continue to get better. And we had switched some good matchups later on. Kansas State, you said they were good matchups for us defensively. Anybody else? 
Yes, sir. For the 2014, you know, I, I, I can comment uh, just in general about that. Of course, can't comment about anybody individually. Uh, but, but we have some, some really good commits right now, you know, on the internet or on paper, on air, or whatever, however you want to say it. And we'll try to end up taking about 25, 25 years. So we've got three or four that we're holding out for, and hopefully that will turn our way if it does. And, you know, right now we've already got an outstanding class. Yes. Your thoughts on the extended playoff new bowl situation that comes up in the conference? You know, asking about the extended playoff, I guess that, I guess that starts in 2014. Hadn't really paid a whole lot of sense to it. I think they take the top four teams and then have a you know couple of games and then have a national championship. Uh, I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, I really do. I mean, it's like the Big Twelve. I mean, everybody plays everybody. You got a chance. I mean, you you know you see who you're playing and the winner wins. So I, I think that'll, you know, solve a lot of problems that have gone on, you know, the last couple of decades of teams going on the field and not being national champions. Yes, sir. What are your thoughts on Lake coming out saying he's going to win the Heisman this year? You know, it didn't bother me. Of course, he did that last, uh, I guess he did that probably in December. I don't know if it's before the bowl game or after, quite honestly. Uh, because he says a lot of stuff. But I think <laughs> I mean, he, there's not been a, there's been very few in our program that have done everything we've asked him to do with a smile on their face and a good will in their heart. You know, he is a great teammate. He's a guy that works extremely hard, very passionate about being a great player by his life on and, on and off the football field. I mean, the guy won't even drink a Diet Coke. I mean, he, he really protects his body, takes care of himself, and prepares for greatness. And I'd rather have a guy saying he's going to win the Heisman than he's going to clap for the guy that's going to win it. You know, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. Anybody else? I'm going to get to work. Yes, sir. Okay, he's talking about injuries with the Troy Baker and Glasgow Mark. Of course, Troy tore his ACL in the spring. Looks like he'll be back ready to go late September or October. He's way ahead of schedule. Uh, if you didn't know, if he didn't have the three marks on his knee, you'd never know it. I mean, he really looks good. He's running good. He's way ahead of schedule. Uh, it costs us to move around some people in the whole line, which I think in the long run will make us better. Uh, we move the guard to a center, the center to a tackle. And, uh, I think these guys are really going to do well. We've got some good athletes on the field and on the line. Glasgow, you know, he's not even a basketball player. He actually started playing basketball in May. He broke up on his foot. His progress is a little bit slower than what we want. You know, we're going to start all this field and work it out. And I don't, I'm not sure he'll be ready to go then. So it's, it's important that we have a couple of these young guys be ready to go work in the season until he gets well. But Glasgow, I mean, he's a grinder. He's a tough guy. If he's if he's breathing, he's playing. So he'll he'll be ready, but he's just got to be 100 percent ready physically because he'll you know he'll say he's ready. He's 85, but he we got to make sure that he doesn't cheat himself and come back too early. Very tough kid. Have a lot of respect for him. Well, this is a great. I'm sorry. Yes. Sir. Did you see any changes in the offense this year, like going to the tight end? Any changes in the offense? Going to the tight end. Going to the tight end more, uh, you know, you, you know, you take what a defense gives you. You know, and we're we're a tempo spread team that, that involves the tight end and the run game and the passing game, and you know that's what we are. That's who we are. So, what I anticipate is is how defenses attack us is us trying to take take advantage of what they're trying to take away from us or you know what they're going to give us. So I, you know, it's. We've got game plans where we, we think a guy's going to get a ball and he never gets it. So it just kind of depends. All of our, a lot of our stuff is, you know, on the fly. It's a, it's a run pass rate. It's a place in, in progress. We have
We have two great tight ends, though, in Iron and Monk. Three good football players that are going to be able to. I think P. Berg and Doug Ford this year, they're going to allow us to come in and out of formations, leaving them on the field uh, because, you know, one's a fifth year guy, they're both fifth year guys, one's a sixth year guy, actually, and uh, one's a fifth year guy, so they're very mature. Appreciate y'all coming around.